Howdy y'all. Another nice humid day in North Carolina, but we are continuing on with the Open Auto Pro updates. So the last update that I covered was wireless Android Auto. So I'm gonna to touch on that, touch on some of the updates that they've made since then, and cover the, some of the hardware setup that I have going on in my personal configuration, since some people have been asking about that. So first, let's start off with a follow up to the wireless Android Auto. And I just wanna confirm that this thing has been super awesome. It's been stable. I've had basically no issues with it. And it's just so liberating to be able to hop in my car and not have to worry about taking my phone out, plugging it in, and then doing the opposite when I get out. It's so, so nice. I just can't really put it into words how convenient that is because Realistically, of course, taking out your phone isn't that big of a deal, but when you're doing it three or four times a day, it's just such a time saver. I really, really love it. Okay, on to some of the updates that they've made since then. So there's been some UI tweaks, some stuff to make it easier for new users. Now you can choose a language. So nothing super exciting. They added or they changed some stuff in the background with the audio and they added native support for Hi-Fi Veridax, which I was pretty excited about. I was interested in those from the get-go, but since they added native support, I went ahead and purchased a DAC Plus install it. It's just a pretty simple install. It's just a hat, you just put it on, and it was working basically out of the get-go. You do have to change something in order for the audio to go out of that instead of your USB audio card, because you're still gonna need that, unfortunately in order to run a microphone because Android Auto basically requires a microphone. So you're still gonna need that. So go into a specific file and change the default. And I'll link a post on the Open Auto Pro forums kind of describing what that process is like if you are in that situation. Now, the more exciting update on Open Auto Pro 10 is native ODB support. So now you can connect to a Bluetooth ODB connection and actually have a dash on the main menu showing you a bunch of different information. So that's really cool. I don't have that running just yet. I'm still running 9.1 at this point because they are recommending that you have a Pi 4 with two gigabytes of RAM or more because it's pretty intensive to run that apparently. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you have that gear, because otherwise you're probably gonna have a bad time. That's why I'm not updating just yet. Moving on to some of the hardware stuff, and I will kind of give you guys a peek behind here, since I know some people were asking. This is probably not how most people go about their setups, but this is how I'm doing mine. So in order to keep some of the features of my car, like the compass and the temperature on the dash up here, I actually need the OEM head unit as far as I can tell. So I actually built this around the OEM head unit. So if you take a peek back here, this is the OEM head unit. So this is probably a bit more of a jank setup, I guess you could say. So the audio, well, now you can see the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Up here, we have the Hi-Fi Berry DAC. Going out of the Hi-Fi Berry DAC, it's going into a ground loop insulator. I forget exactly what the term is, but it's going into one of those. And out of that, it's going to the auxiliary input of the OEM head unit. So definitely a bit odd. I highly, highly doubt most people are doing it like this. But the other connections that I have over here is my USB dongle for Bluetooth. I feel like I am probably going to be on the lookout for another one. I think that's the only issue that I've had. Occasionally, I'll get a little bit of stutter with the Bluetooth, and I'm guessing that that's what it is. Other than that, here we go. And I have the USB receiver for a wireless keyboard, just because you can get away with quite a lot on the uh, virtual keyboard that this has. But if you're typing a bunch of stuff in the terminal, you are definitely gonna want an actual keyboard. And this over here is a USB extension going to a USB audio card that I have actually hidden behind this. I used to have it all in this like little compartment, but after I added that ground loop thing, it is it just got really, really tight. So I decided to fit all that stuff behind here. That way I didn't have any issues. And if you're wondering how I'm powering this whole thing, I have the power going into the actual uh, touchscreen little board and out of that I have the USB plugged into the Raspberry Pi powering that so I'm guessing that's why I might still be receiving that weird under voltage message but it's definitely functional everything that I 
am doing. I, I don't see that the Pi is actually having any issues. So yes, I have the power going into the board of the touchscreen and out of there to the micro USB port on the actual 3B Plus. And that is how I'm getting power. I'll show you, because I know some people are gonna ask how that is getting power or where that micro USB connection is connected to. So I just gotta squeeze everything back in here. It's a pretty flush fit. And this is just a 3D printed housing that I designed and printed. Uh, I also painted it a bit. It's looking uh, not as nice as it once did just because I've been kind of scraping it while getting stuff out. I'm still surprised that I managed to do this all that time ago. This I designed this probably like a year or two ago and I, I actually lost the original file. So I'm gonna have to remake it entirely if I wanna reprint it. That's why I've just been sticking with this. So here I'll go handheld or actually I'll just point this down. So down here, you're gonna see, well, first of all, you're gonna see a bunch of the cables that I actually cleaned up from when I was doing this. And also I'll give you a peek behind here. And here, this is how I'm powering this whole situation. So this is a DC to DC converter. And this I have wired into my fuse box. And out going out of it is a cable that I have plugged into there. And all it is, and I have another one here to show you. So all it is, is a USB cable. Hopefully that focuses. This is just a micro USB cable uh, that I, on the other end, went ahead and stripped it to these two connections. That way I could just easily plug that in to here and feed it into the Pi with a micro USB cable instead of having to do anything more complicated. There's lots of ways to get this stuff done. This is just the one method that I ended up doing. Almost forgot, I actually went ahead and picked up the Connected Pro application from Blue Wave Studios. And this thing is expensive at almost around 10 bucks, but for one feature, it's definitely well worth the price of entry if you at all care about time. And what this does, it will synchronize time with your Raspberry Pi immediately. As soon as it connects, you're gonna have the correct time. You just have to go into the various settings and enable Bluetooth synchronization and make sure that you have the Open Auto Pro selected in the settings and you're gonna to be totally fine. This saves you the hassle of buying, installing and configuring a real-time clock, which realistically isn't that big of a deal, but even I had some issues struggling with the software configuration some months and months ago. And when I installed my Hi-Fi Ready DAC, I just really didn't have the physical space anymore. So this is definitely, definitely nice. Okay, that's gonna be it for me. If you have any questions, about the hardware, about the software that I might have missed, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below and I'm gonna do my best to respond there. Other than that, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel, follow me on my socials and I am looking forward to getting back inside. See ya.